Hey guys, my name is Matthew, and today we're going to be talking about building that wall. Well, not that wall, but like these, these walls. Actually, Matthew of the past, today's episode is about the parable of the man who built his house on the untreated sill plate. Here we go. This week, I thought for certain that I would just be doing a couple simple tasks. I wanted to take down a wall, um, actually a couple different walls, and instead I got into a whole mess. <laughs> To start with, I had to brace up this wall. I used uh, what I think is called a shore jack, but basically it's just kind of something to stick, stick in place so the wall doesn't fall down, the header doesn't fall down, and therefore the whole building, the whole kind of addition doesn't fall down. It sucks. I was working in this kind of addition in the back end of the house that was added later. It's the only part of the house that I think was added later, and so, and it's also one of the weirdest parts of the house. It's had a lot of weird repairs done to it over the years, things to attempt to fix it, and a good number of those things were not done very well, to be honest. This particular wall was one of those places that I knew was done poorly because this is where those, that really offensive two by four wall was, where it's like two by fours, like three quarters of the way down, and then it's like a one by situation trying to fill in the rest. It was a mess. It wasn't really good at all. And so basically I was trying to knock this wall out so I could just literally replace it with a stud wall that was built properly. Unfortunately, I got to the end of taking out this wall and I realized this place has, this particular addition has more problems than I thought. For instance, the wall was apparently structurally providing some stability to the floor. Um, because when I removed the wall, suddenly the floor has a big sag in it as well. And that's not a good thing. Uh, for just really basic building technique is that the stuff on the bottom supports the stuff on the top. So floors support the walls and not the other way around. So I figured from there I would go about just taking out that floor. So I took out the, the there's tile on top of this and then there's also like plywood and then the subfloor which is two by sixes. Um, they were actually put in properly but I think there's some just various rot situation going on. So the floor itself had rotted over time and it all just needed to be replaced. In fact, in this addition, half of the floor had already been replaced. So the floor that I was, that's on like our side, on the three bedroom, one bath side, that floor had already been replaced at some point, looked like new, relatively good treated wood. So I was literally just replacing the other side. So that actually took a long time to get rid of all of this wood. This took a surprising amount of time. Actually, after I turned off the camera because I was done like getting rid of the floor, I spent another like hour and a half removing the joist hangers. Um, that I didn't get on camera because it would have been really lame, but uh, it was a lot of work actually just removing this floor, which I think is a good thing actually. You want a floor that's hard to remove because the floor, like I said, it kind of supports the rest of the structure. Putting in new joist hangers was pretty easy. Basically, just cut these two by sixes to length. Um, you can see I'm using a tape measure here, and then you put them in, and you want to make sure they're nice and level. You can see I've got a nice long level. This one's like six and a half feet long or something. Um, it's really good to have a long level for a job like this. And not only is every joist supposed to be level, but every joist should be level with the joists around it. So you see I kind of use an angle here and kind of check and make sure that these joists are, are, are all hung properly, that the two by sixes are all level across the top because this is where your floor is going to be. And if your floor is not level, that's one of the things that's not good in a house. So you definitely want your floor to be nice and level. Normally I'm kind of a measure once and cut twice kind of guy, but in a job like this, you want to make sure it's done really well. So I was checking the level frequently and often. So before I got into building this wall though, before I started adding a lot more structure to this, to this addition, I wanted to kind of check and make sure that my, my foundation was good. And the foundation is built on cinder blocks. That's really good. So those bricks are actually really solid. They're in good place. They were built well. That's all really positive. The part that's less positive is everything they did after that. Starting with, I, I mentioned earlier that there's the parable of the building that was built on the untreated sill plate. Um, the sill plate is basically the piece of wood that sits beneath the structure, but on top of the foundation. So it's the piece of wood that's between your building and your foundation. And this piece of wood, uh, at least in modern practice, the, the really good thing to do is to put like a piece of vapor barrier in between. It's kind of the spongy stuff that you put between there to make sure the water can't sap from the concrete into the wood. And then the wood itself should be treated. Um, I'm not sure exactly when this thing was built. So maybe that wasn't common building practice back in the day. 
But the issue is, uh, because the sill plate was untreated, the wood on top of it has all had the opportunity to rot. So there's kind of the piece that sits on top of the sill plate that has rotted and come off of the sill plate itself in the back. And that's not good. It's part of the reason that the structure has been sagging and moving. But then as I start looking at the way the rest of this was built, someone later on came back and actually took... <laughs> They just said, well, because that piece is rotting, we'll just put a new one in, but they didn't replace the old one. Um, that's obviously a big job to replace the old one. You nearly have to take off the entire structure in order to do that, but instead they did something very silly. So the old walls are still built on that piece that are coming off and sagging, and the new floors are actually built on this different piece that's sitting inside of there. Um, that wouldn't have been a problem necessarily, except that the structure was originally built wrong. And the ceilings are all supported by one two by one, like a one by, two, one by two piece of wood, this tiny little scab board that's stuck to the original building. And so now about two thirds of my structure, two thirds of the addition is actually just attached via this tiny little one by two piece of wood. And this is the joy but also the benefit of taking things down to studs is you start to learn about how this was built and recognize that actually this addition, if left the way it is, if I try to build things on top of it, I will have to come back maybe in five years, maybe in 10, who knows what the timeline is, but I will have to come back and I will have to fix this later. That's just what will have to happen. Or I can fix it now. And unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, because hopefully you like watching people deconstruct things and then uh, rebuild them again. Unfortunately for me, though, I have to literally tear down pretty much the entire addition um, down to its foundation and rebuild it again. So instead of taking down a wall and rebuilding that wall, I'm literally taking down the whole back half of my house and rebuilding the whole back half of my house. Um, it's going to be a good project and that'll be fun to watch. I hope you guys enjoy me watching, you know, watching me do that. That will be a future thing. Uh, we, there's a little bit of planning and work that involves, goes into that bit. But, um, basically that's the plan is to tear down almost the entire back edition, um, put in a new sill plate, uh, rebuild the floors, then the walls go back in, uh, depending on how they're built, a couple of the walls might be able to stay, uh, but the, the, roof has to come off the ceiling has to come down everything has to go um, so that will involve the next time i get my big dumpster out here my big garbage bin i will be using uh at least some of that time to just deconstruct this whole back uh, addition so that's where we're at if you enjoy watching junk houses being torn apart and rebuilt, uh, then this is the place for you to be. Feel free to hit the subscribe and the like button because we put out new content every single week and we'll see you guys next time.